Hello everyone, Linda here. Uh, welcome to my channel, Gumnut Lane Wearable Art. Thank you for joining me today. Um, today we're going to be working on, as you can see, we've got some little spider friends down down here. So this is, um, we're going to be doing a little bit of wire work. Um, it's not something I do a lot of anymore. I used to do a bit, oh, quite a few years ago. But <clears throat> I really like this design. I remembered I'd, I'd learnt to make the spider and the spider web. I can't remember where I learnt that now, but anyway, um, I did. So I sort of had a little bit of a practice to see if I could remember how to do it. And I did. So I come up with a design. I'll just move these out of the way. And it's for a pendant. This is our pendant here. So I'll just lay that down so you can get a good look at it. Okay, um, it's quite a large pen pendant in um, length. I'll just tell you how long that is. From the top of the bale to the bottom is just a little, oh, about 12, it's actually about 12 and a half centimetres, which I tried it on and that looks quite nice, especially with a, um, a V-neck top or a lower cut like scoop neckline or even uh, like with a, a jumper and it's sitting on top over the over the jumper. It looks uh, lovely. So this is what I thought we'd um, we'd work on. So um, you're going to need a few more supplies than what we normally have. Um, for our spider, we're going to be using uh, 28 gauge, and I've got that in the um, what's it called uh, vintage bronze. So I'm going to need that, and we're also going to need 26 gauge in the silver. Um, yeah, 26 gauge in the silver for the web. I couldn't think what I was going to say then. <clears throat> for the web. Uh, so we're also going to be needing a um, pair of round nose pliers, a pair of chain nose pliers, your cutters. Um, then for the beading part, you're going to be needing a pair of snippers, some um, a Nymo, this is a, a size D in the black. And some fire line. We're going to be using a six pound fire line in the smoke today. I don't normally use a six pound, but um, going through the beads quite a bit, so we um, I just thought it'd be safer to use that. And um, also, I always have my beading all on hand just in case I need it. And bead wise, we have some um, 15 O's in the black, black 11 O's. Uh, 11 o in the purple, 11 o in the silver, and then I've got some little silver drops here. I think they're two millimeter drops, and I have some um, eight millimeter in the um, metallic uh, purple, and then just a few of the um, six o's. And these are just a uh, what are these ones? Uh, color lined amethyst purple. Um, th these ones here are uh, colour line and uh, amethyst purple as well in the 11 O's. Um, what else? Okay, we've got um, a crystal. I think this one is a 10 millimeter. I'm not sure, but you can use any size that you like. It doesn't have to be what exactly what I've got here. And I've got some little crystals. These are a three to four millimeter in the purple. Little uh. Uh, what do you call these? Rondelles. Little rondelle beads in the crystal. And this is for our spider. That's a, um, a 6 O in a black pearl, I think that is. And uh, I also have a black bicone here, which is a 6 millimeter as well. So if you wanted to use that for the body as well, I've done one in with that in the body and it looks quite nice. It uh, catches the light a little bit more than just the pearl. So up to you which one you use there. Okay, we'll get started. So um, we're going to start off with our spider first. So we're going to be using the 28 gauge wire. Roughly about, we're going to need roughly about, uh, I'll just measure this quick for you. I should have measured this beforehand, sorry. I always think of these things later on. Okay, what have we got here? Um, I'd say about 40 centimetres. 
you can see that there it's 40 centimeters so 40 centimeters of just to be on the safe side probably use less maybe 30 centimeters but um yeah just to be on the safe side we'll cut 40. so i'm just uh, cutting my wire here okay now what we're going to do is try and keep on camera for one thing we're just going to get those ends together making a loop not a loop but just bringing it up to the center part grabbing your um, round nose pliers I'm just going to hold on to it like that in the middle of the loop you don't want it to be too big a loop so come down to about there roughly on your on your pliers see how I go with this on a camera God, I've never done this on camera before okay we're just going to wind that up and around open up your your pliers and just allow that second loop to pop in like that and then we're just going to pinch that wire there just so it's a little bit flat if you can see I'm just pinching that in to bring it in okay take it off and just give that a little bit of a squash not a hard squash just a gentle squash just to bring them together like that. Now we're going to grab our bead. Uh, whether I'll use the um, I'll use the round one. I was going to use the bicone, but anyway, we're going to pop that on. If I find the hole so hard with black stuff. There it is. Just go through that hole. Easier said than done sometimes. Gosh, if I'm not on camera, I can do this really easily. If I don't get it this time, I'm going to switch over to the bicane. Okay. Bye cone. Exactly the same process. It doesn't make any difference. There, bye cone. Bye cone. Bye cone has a bigger hole anyway. So just bring it down to the top like that. Then we're going to take one of the wires. So you spread it out like that. One of the wires. Bring it up the side of the bye cone. Grab the end of your wire. Pop it through our little ring there that we've made. Making sure you don't kink your wire. So bring that up. Give it a little little bit of a tug, not too much. You don't want to offset your ring, which I have done then. I tugged a little bit too tight, so I'll just straighten it back up. There. And then pop your wire through one more time like that so if you can see that just pop through there once made just made a little bit of a loop and bring your wire out and depending on how long you want your legs so this is totally up to you I'm going to make mine I'll measure this for you just grab my tape measure here it's about one and a half centimeters from the ring out to the end there's roughly about one and a half centimeters <coughs> excuse me okay so we've got our just give it a little squeeze oops try to stay on camera here just give it a little bit of a squeeze like that go back through sorry got that wrong Yes, okay. Go back through. I didn't get it wrong at all. I was right. So 
So back through our loop, bring the wire around. I know it's a little bit hard to see, my fingers are in the way, but I can't hold on to it any differently. Make another loop, keeping them roughly the same size. They don't have to be exact, a spider's legs aren't always exact. Bending that loop. Now they have to be really neat either. See mine are a little bit square rip there. Okay, that's two we've got done. Going for our third one. Taking the wire through. Giving it a little bit of a squish. It's one, two, three, one more to go. Okay, that's our fourth leg. And bring the wire around to the front again. And we're just going to make his little pincers that he has in the front. So they're going to be smaller than your leg. Bring it up until you think it's roughly about the right size. Give it a little squeeze, which is quite easy with this 28 gauge wire. Okay, now I'm just going to loop through one more time, pulling that wire down. And you can give it a little bit of a tug, don't pull too hard because remember it's only 28 gauge wire. Turn him over, grab your cutters, give that a little bit of a snip there, take a little bit more than that off. Grab your chain nose pliers, I'll just see if I can zoom this in, no I can't, okay just get the end there. Give it a little squeeze, just gently, so you can't feel it. Okay. I'm just going to straighten these legs up just a little bit. And then squish them down again, pulling them around, giving them a squish. Okay, grab your chain nose pliers. I'm starting on the back leg here. And then just start twisting. This is probably the most time consuming part here because, um, yeah, you've got to get like the right angle to twist. So I'm going to show you two legs and then I'll go off camera and finish um, the rest of the legs and come back and we'll do the other the other side. Now you want these to be reasonably tight as well because it is only 28 gauge wire so it's got to have a bit of strength in it. But make sure you leave a little loop at the bottom there if you can see that. Just see if I can get that to... Yeah, there's a little loop there. So just make sure you leave one of those on it. Okay, do the next one.
if you're good at wire work you probably have a better way of doing this than, than what I'm doing it but um, this is the easiest way I've found okay so that's <coughs> excuse me two of our legs done so I'll come back when I've done the other two and just do the same thing with your little um, pincer thing there just um, twist that as well so I'll be back in a moment okay welcome back so I finished that side of our spider so we're coming up and we're going to do exactly the same thing on the other side so we're going to come through up the side of the bead through the loop back through it one more time And just give it a little tug not a huge one just a little one okay now you're, all you're going to do is make your legs the same on this side so if you want to measure your first one make sure that you've got the same length on either side so just make the four of those and your little um, pincer thing at the top doing exactly what I did on the other side and to make this easier I've turned the spider over so I'll come back when I've uh, finished the four legs and we'll um, go from there. Okay, see you again very soon. Okay, I'm back. So I've got my four legs done and my little pincer. They're in the front. Now it's easier on this side because we don't have the wire that was hanging off the side on, on this one. So you can actually grab your little leg with your chain nose pliers like that. Grab your spider and twist him. So just twist his legs like that. Oh, I made this one a bit short. Oh, no, wait, no, wait a minute, that's the pincer. What have I done here? Okay, just got them twisted up there. Okay, give the little pincer a twist and get him out of the way. Okay, and then just do the same thing with all the legs. Just grabbing and giving it a twist. Not forgetting to leave that loop on the end, you need that loop. Okay, so I'll let you finish off those ones and I'll finish off these ones and we'll come back and we'll start on the spider web. Alright, see you again soon. Okay, I'm back. So one last thing with the spider is to organise his legs. So we're just going to grab one of his legs here, the front one, give it a bend, grab his little foot and bend that back up a little bit. Um, move that forward. His little pinches, just grab one and turn it. Oops, I'm off the camera, sorry can't see without holding it close to me. Grab one of his pinches and just turn that in. Same with the other one. Turn it in. Okay, I'll fiddle with those a little bit more in a minute. So grab his front leg, bend it, turn his little foot up, 
same with the next leg so just go all the way around bending them bringing the foot up okay so it roughly looks like that I'll do the other side and I'll come back okay that's our little spider Organ I'll put him down on the mat there organized his little legs so I've got his back ones coming out a little bit further and the front ones coming a little bit further and off to the side and then his little pincers there so that's our little spider we'll get on with the um, spider web so you're going to need um, I, well you don't you can use a 28 gauge but I prefer the 26 gauge for the web to make it a little bit uh, sturdier so you need a bit more of this and I would say probably we'll go with uh, 60 centimeters you can always add more wire on if you need it so I'll just grab my cutters just going to cut that that very well okay so we're starting off with our end here just get that a little bit straighter and we're just going to bend a loop like that then come back down the other way now this all depends too how big you want your um, spider web to be, um, and that depends on your on your um, your spider as well. So I think roughly about this big. I'll give that a measure for you in case you want to follow along exactly what I'm doing. Uh, that's about two centimeters from the top of the loop down to this loop here so you're just going to do this bending like that and do that um, so that you've got six six loops and I'll come back when I finish my six okay I'm back so this is what your um, start of your spider web should look like now so you've got six loops one two three four five six so what we're going to do is grab the end of that wire get your chain those pliers and we're going to start twisting again it can help if you give it a little little squish like that okay and just start start twisting I'm not going to do all of these on camera because it'll just take way 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 too long This is a little bit harder to twist because it's a 26 gauge wire. So if your wrists or your fingers or anything start hurting, just give it a break for a minute and come back to it. Give your fingers a bit of a hands a bit of a wiggle. So we're just going to twist like this. My wrists don't turn the way that they used to. Also, doing this on camera is a lot harder. I don't have the space to turn it. Okay, and you want to leave a loop on the end as well. On this one okay we're just going to do that I went a little bit far on that one oh. okay I'm going to make another one I'll come back when we've got to where we need to be see I've gone down too far on that one see easy to make a mistake don't worry about it you can always fix it up it's the only wire okay I'll be back in a moment okay I'm back 
Um, so what I, I should have mentioned to you is um, when you're twisting, so you don't do what I did and go too far, is keep your thumb and forefinger holding that there so you can't twist past your finger and your thumb. See how it's sitting there like that now? That's what you want it to look like. So we're just going to move on with the um, other ones, doing the same thing, just, just pinching there, holding that like that, and twisting. And I'll come back when I've got all my loops done. Okay, I'm back. So I've got all my six loops done. Uh, try as hard as you can to get them roughly all the same size. Um, yeah, just do your best with that. So anyway, we I've brought them around into a, a circle. So we're just going to spread them out. Get them roughly even. I mean, a spider web is never exact, even though they're as beautiful as what they are. They're not always exact. Now this last little bit of wire that we have here, just going to pop that over the side there for a moment and push it back out of the way. Now with that, this long piece of wire that we've got here, we're just going to start winding. So you're just coming around your first leg of your, of your web here, just like that, bring it up and over and around the next one up over and around you don't want to come out too far so try and keep your spacing as even as you can some are going to be a bit smaller uh, area across than others so it does that doesn't matter you can wiggle them if you want to bring them in a bit closer just get that piece of wire out of the way I'll cut that off in a moment so just around like that do that just a couple of times and then we're going to attach our spider to it okay this piece here just bring it up at the back over the top of the thing you can wrap it around again if you want to. Uh, I don't see the need for it. You can just squish it down into the into the work on your wire here. So just cut him off. Give him a bit of a squish. Just so you can't feel it. I'll still feel that one a little bit. All right, that's fine now. Now what we want to do is grab our little spider. And I've done him in a different color, as you can see, so he stands out on the, um, on the web. So you just want to see where you want to place him. Whether you want him right in the middle of the web or you want him to look like he's coming up the web or he's going down the web, whichever way you... You want to do it. That's for your in your for your, in your discretion. Okay, I think I want mine roughly about there. And you just want to see where his the first leg is, which I would class this as the first leg, the back one here. And it doesn't matter if you don't get it exactly where you want to get it. He's still going to be on the web. Just picked up some yucky stuff where I got that from. Um, yeah, he's still going to stay on the web. So we're just going to go through his first little loop. That's why you need to leave a loop. Just 
bring him down to the web this is more fiddly than it is hard okay there he is so we've got his first leg on there So now you just keep winding. Move your spider out of the way. Now have a look and see if another leg is... Yeah, goodness. <laughs> uh, if another leg is in, in place where you could wire it. Which I would say this front one here is... So I can bring my wire through his little loop. And the good part about this is it doesn't matter if you get, well not kinks, but uh, I suppose they are kinks. A bit of a kink in the wire, it, um, it doesn't matter because it's a spider web and their um, web lines aren't straight, so it doesn't matter. Okay, round the next one. Now don't think of these little pincers there that they stay free, so don't put any wire through there. This one here looks like it's pretty much in place. Sorry guys, I'm really trying to stay on camera here and it's very hard for me to see without bringing it closer to me. I'm doing my best. Around another time around your your um, base straightening it up a little bit if you want you want a bit crooked there so just seeing where his legs lie um, it's going to pull these two apart a little bit because I've made this back one a little bit shorter I'm just going to have to pull him down and what I can do there because I'm out this side now I can go in underneath those two legs and I can grab that back leg of the spider which I'll do now before it goes too far and I can't grab it make sure you get your wire in underneath those legs okay he's nice and secure there and then just keep wrapping around and see when you come up to these legs here you might even be able to get two on on the one piece of wire here and just see how we go all right I'll come back when I've got him all wired on okay I'm back got the spider fully attached so you just continue now just uh, finishing off your spider web so just wrapping around the way that we were if you need to wrap him uh, more wire you can do that just um, like if you're coming to here and you needed to wrap then you would just cut a piece um, loop it around use your pliers to squash it in add on a new piece of uh, a wire do the same thing, make sure your end's not hanging out, and then just continue on. So we're just going to come around.
don't know whether you can hear that rain outside my window there it's actually hitting the window and the back of the air conditioner it's um been torrential rain here lately I'll be glad to see the end of this La, La Nina, which is apparently supposed to happen early next year. All right, so that's the last one there. We'll just wrap that around a couple of times, making sure it's nice and secure. Cut that little piece off. Do it as close as you can. And squish that down. making sure you can't feel it and that's what your spider web should look like okay just going to give it a little bit of a bend try and get it as flat as you can just using your fingers and then grab spidey he's got a little bit squashed down from me holding him so I'm just going to pull him back up fix his legs up if you need to Just pulling them up individually like that just giving a little little pull you don't want him standing up too high out so he catches on things but just enough that he's prominent there so that's what our spider looks like it's even got his bum up in the air the way spiders do okay just straighten those up a little bit All right, now all there is to do is to choose which way you want it to hang, whether you want it that way. Straighten him up a little bit more. Yeah, with the spider going up, or you want him to go crossways or down. Just pick whichever way you like it, whichever way you think the um, the shape of the pendant is the nicest. You can fiddle with your wires if you want to to pull them out a little bit. Okay, so the next part is the um, the beading. So um, I'll just get that all set up and I'll come back when I'm uh, ready to start. Okay, I'm back. I've got my needle threaded up. So all we're going to do is come up through the, the top one that you've chosen to be, or whichever one you've chosen to be your top one. I think I had that right. No, I've got it on the wrong one. This one I wanted. So we're just going to come up through whichever loop you've chosen. I'm going to tie a square knot. make sure that's nice and tight and you can choose whatever color bed this one here I, I started off with the purple going around I don't know I might mm. yeah I'm going to stick with the purple going around so you just pick up as many beads as it takes Pull those down to your work and you want it to fit fairly snugly you don't want it to be uh, all loosey-goosey okay I'm just going to come through that loop
then pick up another line of beads and you're just going to do that all the way around I'll do one more with you and then I'll let you finish off and I'll come back when we're ready to move on I don't want this video to be um, too long for you but also too it takes like forever to download upload I should say onto um, YouTube so okay that's probably one too many beads you don't want it to be all loose you want it to be fairly snug in there So back up through the loop. Okay, so then just continue all the way around until you get back to here and I will see you back there. Okay, see you soon. Okay, I'm back. So gone all the way around and I've come up to this loop here and I've looped through that twice. So just up through the needle twice. Just bring your thread across to the other side. We're just going to start peyoteing now. So I'm going to come through that first bead. Pull that in nice and tight. And then just peyote. All the way around so missing a bead coming up through the next one I'll just do a few of these with you because this video is going to be very long otherwise if I keep just going along so miss a bead come through the next one Okay, you should be able to see that that's, that's what it should look like there. So just do that all the way around until you come back up to the, the top here and I'll meet you back there. Okay, I'm back. So disregard that first part that I said <laughs> um, with the beading. Um, still um, start your first row off like this. I forgot about the crystal. So I undid all of mine and came back. So... We still have to loop up through the um, the first loop there with your needle, pop on a crystal and then add your beads after that and do that on each loop. So however many beads you need to get between each of the, um, whatever they're called on the um, spider web triangles they look like triangles but that's a triangle there so if I refer to a triangle that's what I'm talking about okay however many it takes looks about right to me back up through the loop again There's probably one too many, but I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just going to pop my crystal on anyway. You're not going to see any of that anyway, so it doesn't matter. So we're just going to continue like that all the way around, and I'll meet you back here. Don't put a crystal on this one, though, at the beginning. Just put it on so you've got uh, one, two, where we got... One, two, three, four, five that you're putting a crystal on. So just like that. Okay, I'll see you back when um, I've come back up to the top. Okay, I'm back. So I've come up to the top. I'm just going to tie another um, uh, okay, square knot. <laughs> uh, total blank then. At the top with that cord and we can trim off Oh, I've got to get a new pair of slippers. 
don't know how long I've had these ones for, a long, long time. And they've finally given up the ghost. Okay. So now we're going to peyote. So, you know, miss one, go through one. So we're going to do that all the way around. Okay, so peyote up, just go through your uh, crystal, peyote, go through your crystal peyote, and I'll meet you back when we get back up to the top, and that's the one without the crystal on it. So I'll see you back there. Okay, back. All right, so we've gone all the way around, peyote, all the way around, added our crystals in, and now we're going to start on the bale. So I've done the bale in um, herringbone stitch. So, and I've done mine in um, silver, excuse me, in silver. You can choose whatever colour you want. It's an 11-0, the B, so. Um, I'm just deciding whether I want to do it in the silver or if I want to do it in black. Um, something different, I'll do this one in black. Which is probably going to be harder for me to see, but anyway. So pick up four beads, drop those down to your work, come back up through, this is going to be harder in the black, come back up through two, the two bottom ones. You'll get a little unit like that. Just slide it down. It's going to give me a hard time. There we go. up two more come down through the first two on this side actually I'm going to back out of that and come I'm going to come through one of the purple ones at the top here as well just so it anchors it in Like that. Then I'm going to come across and come back up through purple one. If I can see here, I'm trying to keep this on camera, guys, and see what I'm doing as well. Back up through this purple one on the side and back up through the three black ones. There. Okay, that's anchored in nice and firmly there. So now we can add our crystal. And we're just going to do herringbone now. Picking up four beads. Bringing it, oh, got that caught up. Bringing it down to the work. shouldn't have chose black anyway <laughs> I have now come back up through I've got there I've got five beads one three five yes I need four I don't know if I can't even count these days okay 
Okay, so two on go up through the last two, the first two before the crystal. Again, slide that down to sit on top of the crystal. That will tighten up when we come back down anyway. So just continue on with the herringbone, picking up, picking up two now, and um, yeah, just picking up two, going through those first two. And then back up through the other two on the other side. Three, sorry, three. Get over there, goodness. Behave yourself. Alright, I'll, fi I'll fix that up, get that to come down. So just continue on with your herringbone until you've got enough that you can um, turn it over and it's thick enough to fit a couple of different size cords through it or chains or whatever it is that you're going to use. Alright, I'll see you back. Okay, I'm back. So I finished the, um, the bale off here. Um, just make sure you pass down uh, through your, your crystal and back up through these beads and, and back around to get a couple of times to get the firmness um, Yeah, to just to give it stability um, So what I'm going to do here is because it's going to take way too long for me to bead all of this So I'm just going to give you some ideas um, With this one uh, Okay, what you could do you could just Continue beading around. You could either do it in the 11 O's, um, change the color, uh, maybe do it in silver or black or whatever, or you could go up to an 8 O and um, give it that give that a different look going around. Um, I've brought over some um, what are chip beads. Everybody's always trying to figure out ways to do used up use up chip beads. You could do some of those around the edge. I wouldn't do them all the way around, up to you, but um, maybe just the, the top half uh, coming down to these points here. Um, even if it's not even like this one's not exactly even, it's a little bit lopsided, but it'll just give it some interest. You could also uh, got some little um, amethyst dagger beads here. You could um, add these on at the bottom if you wanted to, uh, either up inside like that uh, just pop a couple in there and I would probably put a silver bead uh, if, if you've got 15 O's that would be better because they would fit nicer in in the um, the silver just uh, something like that and I've also got here another amethyst, amethyst bead that's um, top drilled like that you could dangle that down the bottom there like that um, other than that take those away get some of the little silver um, drops these tiny little silver drops you could just go I'm not going to get those lined up perfectly but just give you an idea pop some of those in and around just down in that bottom section there still add your amethyst drop if you wanted to you could pop a dagger in between um yeah dagger in between those like that if you wanted to i'm 
Well, they're not going to sit perfectly, of course, but just giving you an idea like that. You could also um, move those out of the way. String up some. Um, I would probably use the 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 um, black. I'll just move my camera so you can see there. Some of the black eleven O's, and do some um, some drops coming down. You can make them different lengths. Um, add dangles, add um, beads to the bottom, like some daggers or some of your um, silver drops or whatever colour drop you're going to use. Um, yeah, that's what uh, just a couple of ideas there for you. Uh, yeah, so sorry that I'm not going to get this finished, but it's just it'll, it's going to take at least another hour to do all this beading and that make this over a two hour um, video. So, um, uh, what else do I want to tell you? Um, oh yeah, a couple of other ideas. Sorry, just getting distracted here. I just feel terrible that I'm, uh, I feel like I'm leaving you in the lurch. But, uh, okay. This is an, uh, another little spider web. Here's in the, in the gold. <coughs> a spider. Um, this one here doesn't have... You could add a, a ring at the bottom if you wanted to. Uh, I'll show you here on this earring. This is another idea that I had. So I've done a ring at the top as well as the one that came down that his little legs are attached to. So this is a earring that I was working on. Just attached it with a S hook there. Um, and if you're going to wear those, I suggest you pop your hair up if you've got long hair because I'm sure that it would get tangled in these little feet. Um, yes, yeah, so uh, just do the hook on the end of that, hanging by a couple of the um, little S hooks, or or from a string of beads, whichever way you want to do it, and you bead bead around this the same as we did in 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 this one, bead around that. That's another idea, and I would do the spider upside down because usually if they're hanging off a web, they're going away from it. Generally, I mean, sometimes I suppose they're crawling up. But anyway, up to you, whichever way you do. I'm just trying to give you some ideas here. Uh, I think I sh showed you everything I wanted to show. It say everything I wanted to say. Um, yeah, that's it, I think. So, um, yeah, sorry about that, guys. But as I said, it's just going to... A two-hour video is just way, way, way too long. So, um, everybody have a, a lovely, lovely day, lovely weekend. Um, please... Don't forget to like and subscribe and share my video. That uh, really helps me out, helps me to bring these videos to you. I'm trying to build my channel up so that, uh, yeah, it's uh, worthwhile me doing this for you. Um, uh, that's all I can think of to say for now. So everyone have a great week and I'll see you all next week. Bye-bye.